I'll go into the place of adventure or mystery. A place of fantasy. But you must need and come alive. It's time to open the gates to a strange new world. Chapter 3. My name. I woke up expecting the same routine as the day before. But no one found him anywhere. So once I got up, I saw a bowl of soup on the table. Next to the bowl of soup was a letter that read, Dear Apprentice, I went to town today to help heal the wild horse. Sign Ravato. So that means no errands today. I'm free to explore the town. After I drank my soup, I walked out of Ravato's hut and into the market area. This place is the same like the days before. Merchants and travelers sailing and trading their wares. Little kids running around playing knights of pirates. I couldn't really tell because all I saw was the wooden swords custom each other. And I never remember doing with my friends in the modern life. I walked around the marketplace just looking because I didn't have any money to buy stuff with. All I had was the modern ink pen and a small brown bag of marble, something that will never be useful in the slightest. And the princess Laura came up and said, Sorry about last night. My mom is just rude. Speaking about last night, do you love me? I, s I asked, expecting a yes. No, I just panicked when you fell off, said Laura. Did the queen start? Shouting, Alora, 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 we're almost late for the tournament. What's your name? Asked Alora as he started walking away. I don't remember my name. Oh, that's too bad. If you wait after the tournament, I can help. Said Alora. So I waited for a while, coming to chairs and the triumph, and then the wall. Hey boy, what are you doing here? Asked Ravato. Nothing, just waiting for Laura. Yes. Well, you want the princess hopping around each other for a while? Said Ravato as he tried to hold back a laugh. The princess said she can help me find my name. Yes. Okay, have fun. You know where I'll be. Said Ravato as he walked away. He even waited an hour after the tournament was over. Tell me that I was late. It was tough to escape my mom. Said Laura. She was both got on a horse. How to even find my name? I asked as we got out of town. Have you ever met a dwarf? Excellent. Yes. I did meet them before. I replied. As the horses started trotting along the dirt path. The dwarves have a magical pickaxe that gives them their names. Lord. So if I picked up that pickaxe, it will show me my name, I said. She started galloping yet again. Then, then we came to a cave with a few dwarves standing else. Hey, you son, come back! Said so Dewis in an angry tone, like usual. My friend here needs to lift the pickaxe to find his name. No, no. Only dwarves can lift a pickaxe, and even if I allow a human to take one up, it wouldn't be a common bread thief. Step loose. Then the rest of the dwarves came running out the gate, screaming. Huey, what's going on in there? M -m Monsters! Screaming Huey. A monster, you gotta be kidding me. St. Louis and the giant spider appeared in the entrance of the cave. If you won't defeat the spider, maybe I will. I said as I walked into the cave. The spider had legs as sharp as jagged knives, eyes the size of bowling balls, and acid that can melt mine carts. I took a pickaxe out of some stone nearby and jumped on the spider's head. I used the pickaxe to chop the head clean off. The spider clips now being defeated. Ow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Said Lewis. Not bad, kid. Not at all. Said the smart dwarf. I looked down at the pickaxe and the name's it Sigh the Fierce. You can see. 
You can stay for a while at least. At least for dinner. See, here we that is what we did back in the cottage. We all had a feast while you the mute door enacted me defeating that spider. So my name is Zyda Fierce. Maybe one day that name will become a hero marked in legend.